In the fictional universe of Stargate, a number of technologically advanced races and societies have produced a variety of highly advanced weapons, tools, and spacecraft. By liaising with these races and learning from them, Earth too has begun to create its own futuristic technology. All such technology is psi classified top secret, and is used mainly by the SGC, its SG teams, or in Atlantis. Topic. Fictional materials and elements Hafan drug a drug made by the Hafans, which prevents the individual from being fed on by the wraith and has the side effect of killing any wraith who attempts to do so. It first appears in Poisoning the Well, where the Atlantis expedition is made aware of the drug. They quickly discover that the drug's positive benefits come with a 50% chance of death in the subject. The Hafans distributed it among their population anyway, and the Wraith exterminated them as a result. The drug is later discovered and refined by Michael, reducing the fatality rate to 30%, and distributed to several random planets in Pegasus. To that end, in Outsiders, it is revealed the Wraith are destroying any civilization associated with the drug so they can feed indiscriminately again. Maclarium an artificially synthesized super-heavy element with an atomic number of over 200, named after its fictional creator, Dr. McLaren. Originally named Who 2340, in the episode, Red Sky, SG-1 attempts to introduce it into the sun of the planet Katow, hoping to neutralize foreign plutonium atoms and thus stop a reaction that would eventually render Katow uninhabitable. Naquita, also spelled, Naquita. Nakada, or Nakweda, a rare, super heavy metal first depicted but not named as a quartzite like mineral in the original Stargate movie. Its most basic use is as a weapon. Nakweda greatly amplifies energy, making it extremely potent if paired with explosives. Due to its unique properties, Nakweda forms the basis for many advanced technologies. The Stargates themselves are composed almost entirely of Nakweda. Naquita is also present in the bloodstream of the Goa'uld, which allows them to control their technology and sense the presence of other symbiotes. The Goa'uld have Naquita mining operations on many planets, its refined form, weapons-grade Naquita, is extremely valuable and often used as currency. Weapons-grade Naquita is so dense that two Jaffa are required to lift a quantity the size of a couple of common housing bricks, which probably indicates that Naquita is meant to lie in the island of stability. Alternate forms of Naquita include liquid Naquita, used to power Goa'uld staff weapons, and heavy liquid Naquita, used to power Goa'uld AG-3 weapons satellites. Naquita is a superconductor. Naquita does not occur naturally in the solar system. Naquadria, also spelled Naquadria, or Naquadria, a highly unstable variant isotope of Naquita with considerably greater energy production capacity and correspondingly greater explosive potential. Naquadria emits radiation that can cause death, or in non lethal doses, brain damage, resulting in delusions or schizophrenia. The energy released by Naquadria can catalyze nearby Naquita into more Naquadria in a self-sustaining reaction. Naquadria was thought to occur naturally only in the nation of Kelowna on the planet Langara, but was later discovered that it was created by a Goa'uld during an experiment. In Kelowna it is used to construct weapons of mass destruction for a cold war against two rival nations. The Colonian Jonas Quinn brings Naquadria to Stargate Command in protest of his government's weapons program. Naquadria allows the Earth X-302 fighter to be fitted with a far smaller hyperdrive than would otherwise be possible, although its instability limits the drive's utility to short, unguided jumps. The Earth ship Prometheus also initially uses Naquadria in its hyperdrive, though the element's instability causes problems on its first flight. The Earth Mark 9 Gatebuster nuclear bomb is enhanced with Naquadria and is designed to detonate the Naquita in a Stargate to create a massive explosion. The two power sources with enough power to dial the two nine chevron addresses are planets with Naquadria cores and stars. Neutronium a super-dense element key to Asgard technology and in the construction of human form replicators. 
The Asgard time dilation device on Hala is protected by a shell of solid neutronium. The new Asgard homeworld, Aurea, is rich in neutronium, which leads it to be targeted by the replicators. The nanite Asurans are also based on neutronium, and the abundant deposits of neutronium in the crust of their homeworld proves to be the final key to their defeat in Be All My Sins Remembered. Earth has obtained supplies of neutronium, code named Pre assembled masonry panels for its own nanite experiments. Trinium, a fictional metal introduced in Spirits, which is of great value to Stargate Command. Though weak and brittle in its raw form, when refined it is 100 times lighter and stronger than steel. After the iris over Earth's Stargate is destroyed in a matter of time, a trinium-titanium replacement is installed. Trinium is used in the production of Earth's starships, such as the Prometheus. In Evolution, a trinium dart is used to pierce the armor of a cull warrior. Trinium is also a key component in Talon technology. The hull of the advanced Asgard ship O'Neill is composed of an alloy of naquita, trinium, and carbon, stated by Thor to be the strongest material known to his people. Topic: <laughs> Earth technology. The humans of Earth, known as the Tauri to the Goa'uld and Jaffa, and the Atlanteans to the Wraith, have developed many futuristic technologies throughout the course of Stargate SG-1 and its spin-offs. One of the primary missions of the Stargate program is the acquisition of technologies capable of defending Earth and improving the lives of its inhabitants. Most useful alien technologies brought back by SG teams through the Stargate are studied at the SGC or at Area 51, and reverse engineered when possible. Earth has also benefited immensely from collaborations and gifts from its various offworld allies, such as the Asgard and the Takra. Since the discovery of Atlantis in the Pegasus Galaxy, Earth has gained a significant understanding of ancient technology. Mobile Analytic Laboratory Probe MALP, a reconnaissance device sent through a Stargate. Topic. Ancient technology Although extinct, the ancients originally called the Alterans, known as Lantians, in the Pegasus Galaxy are the most advanced known civilization shown in the Stargate fictional universe, except perhaps for the Planet Builder from Stargate Universe series. Among their many technological achievements is the Stargate Network itself, central to the franchise, and the city ship of Atlantis, the setting of Stargate Atlantis. Ancient inventions and machines play critical roles in many Stargate stories, including The Fifth Race, Redemption, Lost City, Reckoning, and Stargate, the Ark of Truth. Zero Point Module ZPM, extraordinary power sources used to power ancient devices. Related to zero point energy. Physically about the size of a car battery. Generally pronounced ZPM. American Z, except by Canadian characters who pronounce it ZPM. Commonwealth Z. Topic. Asgard technology The Asgard are an extremely advanced race who become allies of Earth, and provide many of their technologies to the SGC. They were once contemporaries of the ancients, and learned much from them. The Asgard are no longer capable of traditional reproduction and instead perpetuate themselves through cloning, as they have the technology to upload and store Asgard consciousnesses and transfer them to new bodies. Unfortunately the repeated cloning process has resulted in degeneration due to the lack of genetic diversity. To solve this, the Asgard developed a form of controlled mutation to introduce variations into their gene pool. Neutronium is a key element of Asgard technology. Prominent Asgard technologies include Battle armor 6 foot tall 1.8 meters metallic suits worn by a rogue group of Asgard in Pegasus. They possess a built-in shield wall generator that can hold back weapons fire from conventional weapons for several minutes and an M-dampening field that negates any scanning equipment used on them. 
They also have a pre-programmed self-destruct in case anyone tries to remove the suit by force. The interior of the suits mold to the wearer, allowing normal humans to use them in addition to the much smaller Asgard. As seen in Stargate Universe, these appear to be in fact an old ancient technology. Beaming technology teleportation system that allows people and objects to be moved nearly instantly across long distances, capable of handling objects as large as an entire skyscraper. The Asgard have shared beaming technology with Earth, and it is installed on Earth battle cruisers. The technology also falls into the hands of the Goa'uld after Anubis probes Thor's mind. Beaming requires a sensor lock on the subject, members of SG teams are equipped with locator beacons, and later locator chip implants, to facilitate emergency beam out. The Wraith have developed countermeasures to prevent beaming aboard their ships. Beaming is not possible through shields. With a slight modification, Asgard beams can convert energy into desired forms such as air and food. Computer core computer containing all the knowledge of the Asgard, including their entire recorded history. It is installed on the Odyssey as the Asgard's final act before their self-destruction. The core can generate a holographic representation of any Asgard for interaction. It has its own power source that is tied into the systems of the ship. The core is very user-friendly, allowing IOA agent Merrick to create a replicator simply by giving it a chip with the base design, the core filled in the blanks. Dialing device small stone-shaped device capable of activating a stargate to a predetermined destination without the need for a DHD. Directed energy weapon Asgard starships are armed with energy weapons. Kvasir loans an energy weapon to the SGC in order to return numerous alternate universe SG teams to their respective realities. In Unending, the Asgard install plasma beam weapons, their latest technology, on the Odyssey. These beams are capable of overcoming the shields of an Ori mothership. The weapons are later installed on the other Daedalus class battle cruisers and are shown to be highly effective against both Asuran and Wraith ships. Hologram system technology that allows the remote projection of three-dimensional images. The Asgard use holograms to disguise themselves as Norse gods on primitive planets. Asgard communication systems use holograms to facilitate conversation. The SGC has developed its own version of an Asgard hologram system, called Chimera. Anubis acquires the technology after probing Thor's mind. This technology may also have been shared with or acquired from the ancients as shown in Stargate Atlantis, aboard the ancient battleship Tria. Intergalactic hyperdrive Asgard hyperdrives allow travel between galaxies in days or hours, given a sufficient power source. The Asgard have shared their hyperdrive technology with Earth. Invisibility device technology given to the Tierno to hide from predators. Several are stolen by rogue NID agents. Replicator Disruptor Satellite Application of the Ancient Replicator Disruptor designed to function on a planetary scale. One is provided to the Alpha Site to defend against Fifth. Earth is developing its own version called the Planetary Wide Anti-Replicator Weapon. PWARW. Shields Asgard starships are equipped with energy shields. Asgard shields are capable of enduring all sorts of weapons fire from every existing race. Goa'uld weapons do virtually no damage to it, while the much-feared Ori weapons require several direct hits to penetrate. Also Asgard shields have been the only known defense against even the Ancients' drone weapons. Asgard shield technology has been shared with Earth. Thor's hammer device installed on Cimmeria to protect it against the Goa'uld. It scans incoming travelers through the Stargate and beams those harboring a symbiote into a prison, which allows humans to leave but not go out, nor Jaffa with juvenile symbiotes. SG-1 disables the hammer to rescue Teal'c, and later Thor provides a new hammer to Cimmeria which provides an exception to one Jaffa, Teal'c. Time dilation device technology that manipulates the passage of time. One is used in an attempt to trap the replicators on the planet Hala. Another is loaned to Earth to seal an interdimensional gap in a black hole. The Asgard core on the Odyssey has a built-in time dilation device, used to escape the Ori in Unending.
Topic: Assuran technology. The Asurans more commonly referred to as the replicators are sentient nanite constructs created by the ancients to fight the wraith. The Asurans possess the early technology of the ancients at the time of their war with the Wraith. The Asurans use starships of Atlantean design, such as city ships and Aurora-class battleships. In Lifeline and This Mortal Coil, a second type of Asuran warship is shown, smaller in size than the Aurora class. Prominent Asuran technologies include Core Drive a component of an Asuran battleship's navigation system. An Asuran copy of Keller gives one to a clone of Elizabeth Weir, who in turn gives it to the Atlantis expedition. McKay uses it to track all the Aurora-class battleships in the Pegasus galaxy. Probe hyperspace-capable device used by Oberoth's forces to track down the remnants of Neom's rebel group. It is shot down over their duplicate Atlantis, though not before transmitting data back to Asaurus. Satellite weapon weapon sent to attack Atlantis in response to Earth's preemptive strike on Asaurus, consisting of a stripped-down ship with a Stargate, hyperdrive, shield, and sensors. Once the Stargate activates, the Asurans transmit a powerful energy beam through. The beam doubles as an unlimited power source for the shield, effectively making the satellite indestructible. The wormhole can be maintained indefinitely by means of multiple ZPMs on the other side, which also prevents the target's stargate from dialing out. Atlantis only survives the satellite weapon by moving out of range, leaving its planet for another. <laughs> Goa'uld technology The Goa'uld are the main adversaries for most of the run of Stargate SG-1. They scavenged or conquered most of their advanced technologies from other races. However, there are innovators amongst the Goa'uld, Anubis and Baal in particular have been depicted with a great deal of technological ingenuity. Many Goa'uld devices, such as the staff weapon, are designed to be more showy than practical, meant to intimidate and reinforce their position as gods to their followers. Some pieces of Goa'uld technology, such as the hand device and the healing device, respond only to mental commands and require naquita in the bloodstream of the user to operate. Prominent Goa'uld technologies include Force Shield and Energy Barrier, also called a Force Field or simply a Shield. Goa'uld Force Shields work on a frequency oscillation principle, so a relatively slow moving object can bypass it at the right moment. Goa'uld motherships are protected by force shields, as are some ground-based facilities. Force shields are also installed inside ships to restrict access to certain areas, and to contain hull breaches. Some powerful Goa'uld are equipped with personal force shields activated with a button on their hand device. These shields react proportionally to the amount of kinetic energy of incoming matter, so they can be penetrated by relatively slow-moving objects such as a thrown knife. The Takra have made force shield technology available to the SGC. Hand device also known as a ribbon device. The hand device is a metal, glove-like object with a large red gem set in the palm. It is the personal weapon of the Goa'uld and requires Naquita in the bloodstream to operate. They utilize a modified version of a staff weapon's power source channeled through amplification crystals, and are thought-controlled. The hand device can generate a shockwave that throws back anyone in its path with great force. The Jaffa attribute the Goa'uld ability to hurl people through the air as a sign of their divine power. The hand device can also generate an energy stream to a person's head that causes severe pain and eventual death. This function creates a mental link between Goa'uld and victim, which may allow the Goa'uld host to send a message through. Hand devices can also be used to block ZAT blasts, and have buttons on the wrist for controlling Goa'uld technology. Sarcophagus coffin-like chamber capable of vastly extending life, healing almost any illness, repairing grievous injuries, and even reviving the recently dead. However, frequent use of the sarcophagus becomes addictive and has a deteriorating effect upon the mind. This is a main factor in why the Goa'uld are evil, and why the Takra refuse to use the sarcophagus. 
Sarcophagi are sometimes used to preserve individuals for thousands of years, although there is a limit to how long a sarcophagus can extend a person's life. The first sarcophagus was created by the Goald Telchik, using a less potent version of the energy emitted by an ancient healing device. Staff weapon Standard weapon used by the Jaffa, consisting of a metal quarterstaff with an almond-shaped head that splits open to fire a powerful energy blast. There is a counterbalancing club on the back end, allowing the weapon to be used in melee combat at close ranges. It is powered by liquid naquita. In skilled hands it can be quite effective, but it is less accurate and slower to fire than earth-made firearms. Jack O'Neill describes it as a weapon of terror, rather than of war. Heavier models of the weapon can be slung at the waist by a strap, or mounted on fixed or mobile platforms to act as artillery support. Goa'uld ships are equipped with large-scale versions of these weapons. The Soden use a variant of the staff weapon with the back half removed, making it light and easier to carry. Zataniktel Zat pronounced Zat Nika telephone, usually shortened to Zat, a commonly used sidearm shaped like a small snake curved into an S shape that springs forward when activated. One shot from the Zat stuns, though its effectiveness varies with different people, a second shot kills, and a third shot disintegrates. The producers eventually regretted introducing the disintegration feature and retconned it out of existence after season 3, and in joke is made of this in the episode, Wormhole Extreme, where Martin Lloyd suggests it and a character replies, That's quite possibly the stupidest thing I've ever heard you say. Zat blasts can be transmitted through conductive materials like metals, and can also be used to either destroy electronic equipment or as a power source. Topic. Ori technology The Ori are ascended beings who serve as the main antagonists in seasons 9 and 10 of Stargate SG-1, posing a major threat because of their advanced technology. As they were once the same race as the ancients, Ori and ancient technologies are comparable and have many similarities. The Ori Supergate is compatible with a normal Milky Way Stargate, and the Ori possess ring transporters cosmetically different but functionally identical to ancient equivalents. They also have their own version of the ancient control chair on their motherships. Prominent Ori technologies include Orbital Weapons Satellite A satellite that fires a powerful energy beam. A prior provides the design to the Rand Protectorate on Tegalus in exchange for their conversion to origin. Stargate Command sends the Prometheus to destroy the weapon, but it is protected by a shield impervious to its attacks. The Prometheus is itself destroyed as the satellite's weapon can penetrate its shields. SG-1 eventually plans an attack that would destroy the satellite, compelling RAND officials to the negotiations table. Prior Plague a biological weapon released by the Priors, used to coerce populations into accepting origin as the Priors can also cure it using their powers. The disease is similar to the plague that nearly wiped out the ancients millennia ago, suggesting a relationship. The plague is highly virulent and eventually leads to major organ failure. First seen used against primitive planets, the priors eventually deploy it against Earth, where it rapidly spreads beyond the SGC. The epidemic is cured with assistance from the ancient Orlan, the Soden, and the Jaffa Jarek, who had been transformed into a prior, though not before thousands of lives are lost. Shields Several forms of Ori shields have been depicted. Ori ships are equipped with powerful shields that are impervious to almost any attack. In Beachhead. A prior generates a force field that uses the energy of incoming weapons fire to expand. The shield is projected through the Stargate and persists even after the prior is destroyed, and eventually covers the entire planet after absorbing the energy of an Earth-made Mark IX Nequadria enhanced nuclear bomb. It then collapses the planet into a quantum singularity, to serve as the power source for a nearby supergate. The Orichi, Adria, is protected by a personal shield generated by a pendant around her neck. According to her, it contains a piece of Celestis, the Ori Holy City. It protects her against the Dakara superweapon in Counter-Strike. In The Quest. 
She extends the shield around SG-1 and Ball to protect them against a dragon. Supergate a gigantic stargate designed to allow the passage of starships. The Goa'uld word for this device is Chapico. The Supergate is made up of 90 smaller pieces that are moved through a regular stargate. Once assembled, a nearby planet is collapsed into a quantum singularity to provide the massive power needed to open a wormhole to the Ori galaxy. Samantha Carter theorizes that the singularity allows a connection to be maintained indefinitely. Each segment of the Supergate is nearly indestructible. Stargate Command eventually develops a plan to destroy the Supergate by beaming Mark IX nuclear warheads between the segments and detonating them during gate activation. The first Ori attempt to create a Supergate in the Milky Way fails when Vala Mal Doran inserts her Teltac into the incomplete ring and prevents the segments from completely connecting. The second Supergate forms successfully and allows a fleet of Ori motherships into the Milky Way. The SGC seals the Supergate to the Ori by opening a connection from the Pegasus Galaxy to a regular Stargate near the Supergate, and then jumping the wormhole to the Supergate with a large nuclear explosion. The Supergate is reopened in order to send the Sangral to the Ori Galaxy, and is used by the Odyssey to travel to the Ori Galaxy. The special effects for the Supergate are not always consistent regarding its size in different episodes. Ori Staff Weapon A small, metallic staff used by Ori Warriors is their primary weapon. It seems to be a much more refined version of a Goa'uld Staff Weapon. It fires small blue, white bolts of plasma, rather than a large blob of yellow plasma, as with the Goa'uld's version. It is powered by a small blue crystal that is also capable of powering other ancient devices by using wires to transfer the current. Ori Stun Weapon A small hand weapon shaped in the symbol of origin that is worn as a gauntlet on the arm of Ori soldiers. The Ori Stun Weapon appears to share the same blue-white plasma energy as the larger Ori Staff Weapon, but is less potent. This weapon is similar in function to the Zatniktel with one shot from this weapon capable of rendering an individual unconscious and multiple shots required to kill. Prior Staff A tall staff with a blue jewel at the top that is carried by the Priors. This staff is adorned with the symbol of Origin and when activated the crystal on the top glows, likely serving to convince followers of Origin that the actions performed by the Priors are miracles of the Ori. The staff is connected to that of every other prior through a subspace link, strong enough to cover an entire galaxy but not strong enough to reach the home galaxy of the Ori. Topic. Takra technology The Takra are an offshoot of the Goa'uld and thus have access to many of their technologies, such as force fields, memory devices and transphase eradication rods. Takra forces rely on Zatanictels, as they lack the Naquita necessary to build staff weapons. The Takra often assist the SGC in developing new technologies, and they have provided many pieces of their technology to Stargate Command when required. Takra one-way force fields are installed in the SGC's isolation rooms. Prominent Takra technologies include Crystal tunnel used by the Takra to quickly build new bases. These tunnels grow underground automatically from a small seed crystal into predetermined configurations, manufacturing oxygen in the process to create a livable environment. They can also be collapsed rapidly should the Takra need to evacuate. They are used to facilitate a Langaran drilling machine on a mission to stop the underground spread of Nequadria. Goa'uld Tracking Network An encoded subspace network that receives signals from tracking devices on over a hundred attacks, placed by Takra operatives over a number of years. Jacob, Selmak provides a receiver to this network to the SGC in order to monitor the war between the Goa'uld and the replicators. Cull Disruptor A weapon based on an ancient healing device, that can neutralize cull warriors. Radioactive isotope When injected, this isotope conceals the user from sensors for 8 hours. It is used by Daniel Jackson and Jonas Quinn to infiltrate Anubis mothership. Real chemical A memory-altering substance derived from the natural secretions of the real species, which allows a subject to fool another into trusting them. 
It is used by Daniel Jackson to infiltrate a summit of the System Lords, and by Cameron Mitchell to infiltrate the Lucian Alliance. Symbiote extractor apparatus used to extract a symbiote from a host. Ball's clone was the first to be shown having been removed from its human host. Other symbiotes have been removed from their host by the Takra before this, whether this device or other means were used to do this is unknown. Symbiote poison an aerosol toxin deadly to Goa'uld symbiotes, that is highly potent even in minute quantities. It is originally developed to assassinate the system lords, but is instead used to wipe out Anubis' army on Ravana. The Trust later gains access to the poison and uses it to attack Goa'uld worlds in Endgame killing millions of Jaffa in the process. Tretonin a drug extracted from Goa'uld symbiotes, introduced in Cure, as the creation of the Pangaran civilization, using the spawn of the Takra queen Egeria. The drug reproduces the symbiote's healing powers, allowing perfect health and extended life, while also suppressing the user's natural immune system as the symbiote does. The Takra eventually develop a synthetic version of Tretonin, which is first tested on the Jaffa in Birthright, and eventually becomes widespread amongst the Jaffa, freeing them from their dependence on the Goa'uld. Tretonin is ineffective in a small number of Jaffa. Zatark detector a device invented by Anis, meant to work in conjunction with a memory device to search for false memories that would indicate that a person has been brainwashed into a Zatark assassin. It works by comparing the subject's conscious and subconscious mind. However, it can give a false positive if the subject is subconsciously concealing something else, such as in the case of Jack O'Neill and his attraction to Samantha Carter. Topic. Wraith technology The Wraith are the main antagonists of Stargate Atlantis. Although not as advanced as their enemies, ancients, the Wraith were able to drive them out of the Pegasus galaxy by virtue of superior numbers, made possible by cloning technology powered by stolen ZPMs. The Wraith have been shown to be tactically and technologically adaptable, being able to quickly develop a countermeasure to Asgard beaming technology, and creating highly sophisticated computer viruses for use against the Daedalus and the Asurans. The Wraith also operate an extensive network of transmitters and relay devices throughout Pegasus that allow them to respond rapidly to events of interest. Many pieces of Wraith technology, including their ships, are a hybrid of organic and mechanical parts with the ability to heal damage. Prominent Wraith technologies include Culling Beam a short-range transporter beam that dematerializes and stores matter for rematerialization at a later time. They are most often mounted on the bottom of wraith darts for the purpose of capturing human prey, hence the common name. They can also be used to deploy troops, or as a site-to-site -site teleportation system in wraith facilities. M generator an experimental device that generates a low-frequency pulse capable of triggering traumatic hallucinations in nearby humans, meant to enhance the wraith's telepathic ability to create illusions. Abandoned on a planet after it proved unstable, it is activated by a group of genii, who kill each other under the device's influence. The Atlantis team nearly suffers the same fate. Grenade a spherical explosive device on a timer, activated by pulling the two hemispheres apart, twisting a quarter turn, and pushing back together. John Shepard uses one as a landmine in an unsuccessful attempt to kill a wraith in The Defiant One. It should be noted that this grenade has a golden color, an inorganic design and seems designed to kill rather than stun its targets. For these reasons it should be considered a possibility that the wraith from which the devices were recovered may have taken them from a victim, possibly a Lantean. Probe a hovering spherical device used for reconnaissance. One investigates M7G677 in response to a location signal, and another monitors the hunt of Ronan Dex on Satata. It has similarities with the Kino, which was discovered by the Destiny Expedition in SGU. Stun Bomb newly introduced weapon shaped like a ball, that generates a massive stunner discharge. Its range is shown to cover the entire SGC facility. 
Stun rod a rod separated into two pieces that, once connected, generate a stunner discharge that incapacitates everyone within at least a dozen meters except for the user. Stunner handheld weapons designed to incapacitate human prey for future feeding, and thus cause no significant physical damage. Three sizes of stunners have been shown, a small pistol, a medium truncheon, and a large rifle with a bayonet-type spike. Some humans are more resistant to stunner blasts than others, and humans under the influence of wraith-feeding enzyme are either immune or extremely tolerant to its effects. The Atlantis expedition has accumulated a cache of stunners from their encounters with the wraith. Subspace tracker an organic device that transmits a tracking signal through subspace, allowing targets to be tracked from many light years away. Runners have these surgically implanted into their back, usually in or near their spinal columns, preventing easy removal and enabling the wraith to easily keep track of them. Intergalactic communication device constructed by a wraith on Earth in a parallel universe. Used electricity from the main power grid of the U.S. to send a message to other Wraith about the location of Earth. When activated, it also generates an enormous M field that can cause blackouts miles away. Due to the immense power, the device also opened a small rift in the space-time continuum, carrying the message to other realities due to it being destroyed before the transmission was finished. Topic. Other technology Various other technologies have been depicted in Stargate SG-1 and Stargate Atlantis that are significant to the plot, including Atanic armband legendary devices believed to be created by the extinct Atanics. Worn on the forearm, they inject a virus into the user that vastly enhances speed and strength. They are discovered by the Takra Anis, who brings them to the SGC for testing as their effects are neutralized by Goa'uld symbiotes. SG-1 undertakes a mission to destroy Apophis advanced mothership under the armband's influence, but discover that the effects wear off as the host acquires antibodies to the virus. Memory grafting device technology invented by the Galarans at least particularity based and enhanced from other technologies left on their world, allowing one person's memories to be read, stored, and implanted seamlessly with human physiology. Earth expresses interest in the device due to its great military and professional potential, though it is shown that there is also the potential for abuse. The device is later used by Cameron Mitchell to help a dying friend, and to give Vala false memories so as to capture Adria. Link's sophisticated computer system that provides for the inhabitants of P3X289, who live in a protective force field due to an ecological disaster. The Link is found to be altering memories to keep its charges from learning that the force field is shrinking and that it has been sending people outside to die so as to avoid overpopulation. The link is disabled by SG-1, and the people of P3X289 resettled. Mimic device Small devices used by aliens to impersonate SGC personnel in an invasion of Earth. After the aliens are defeated, the devices are sent to Area 51 for study. They are stolen by the NID and used to frame Jack O'Neill for an assassination attempt on Senator Kinsey. Quantum Mirror a portal made from Naquita, found on P3R233, that allows access to parallel universes. Daniel Jackson's experience with the mirror gives Earth advance warning of Apophis attack. Afterwards, the mirror is stored at Area 51. It is used by alternate versions of Samantha Carter and Charles Kowalski to flee from Goal domination in their universe. The mirror is later destroyed. Stasis pod The stasis pod used to make a whole virtual world that was used on the crew of the Aurora made by the ancients. Talon ion cannon The primary defense technology of the Talon. They are ground-based weapons that can destroy a attack in a single shot, until Anubis devises shield modifications that render them useless. Under Goa'uld pressure, the Talon offer ion cannon technology to Earth in exchange for Trinium. However, Samantha Carter determines that it would be impractical for Earth to deploy an ion cannon network due to the number of cannons required. Talon phase device A small device developed by the Talon which allows them to pass through solid matter such as walls or the iris protecting Earth's stargate. 
The Talon later incorporate this technology into a powerful bomb developed for the Goa'uld Tanith and were planned to be used to destroy Stargate Command before the Talon rebelled against Tanith. Traveler Pistol Ronin's gun, weapon carried by Ronin Dex, first seen in Runner. It has three settings that are indicated by color on the weapon, orange for stun, white for kill and red for incinerate. The origin of the weapon is still unknown, though the episode, Travelers, shows the travelers carrying the same type of weapons. It is unknown whether the travelers developed these weapons or simply scavenged them. Sentinel advanced defensive device created by the Lotonins, who have since rejected technology and forgotten its specifications. The device is inadvertently disabled by two NID agents seeking to study its technology for the defense of Earth, leaving Latona vulnerable. SG-1 determines that the Sentinel must be bonded to a human operator to activate, one of the NID agents originally responsible volunteers in order to save Latona from Svarog. Touchstone a device on the planet Madrona that controls the weather, without which the weather becomes violent. In the episode, Touchstone. It is stolen by rogue NID agents masquerading as SGC personnel, and later recovered by SG-1. 